close to a hot war with the Russians. They had been launching some rockets, and ours too often had been blowing up on the launch pad. And that was sort of the background of what happened then in, in uh, 57 when they sent up Sputnik. Right then, I think we all inwardly resolved that that wasn't going to last. We are going to do something about it. That something would be the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. In a little more than a decade, the people of NASA would devise the methods and build the machines to send satellites to faraway worlds and land man on the moon. Explorer 1 had science instruments on it. And so it was really marks the first use of space for scientific exploration. We have one of the most challenging assignments that has ever been given to modern man. We will be preparing for the day when manned flight goes into space. Alan Shepard's flight was a fantastic moment in the history of NASA. I think back on that and I watch him come out of that van on the redstone pad and look up at that rocket in that silver suit he had on, wondering himself what the hell he was doing there. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. This is Freedom 7. This nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. That was all heady stuff, and we were all, you know, go, go man, go. Some of the doctors were concerned, for instance, that when you're in zero G for a while, for several hours, they were afraid your eyes might change shape. Roger, zero G, and I feel fine. Capsule is turning around. Oh, that view is tremendous. This is the dawning. It truly was the age of Aquarius in the 60s. The mood around us was always electric. The press uh, revered the astronauts and it revered those of us in the front of the program. Communication satellites, of course, came into being and a lot of other you know, neat things have happened as a result of that technology push. There's the drop. Before it returns to Earth again, the X-15 may fly some 60 miles straight up at nearly 4,000 miles per hour. The country was trying to build a supersonic transport, at least to do some research and build some prototypes. So by trying to study uh, the uh, flow fields about these vehicles, trying to compute the sonic booms and their propagation to the ground was a very interesting and challenging problem. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Liftoff. Gemini was the program between Mercury, uh, the single-seater in Earth orbit, and Apollo, the three-seater, all the way to the moon. Gemini 12, Houston Capcom, new EVA record, beautiful job. The fire on the pad was a, a traumatic event. It ripped us apart, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, it was a terrible day. Five weeks later, as the backup crew, we inherited the first manned Apollo mission, which turned out to be Apollo 7. So we were quite proud of the fact that we had a triumph out of a disaster. The first time we flew a crew on the big Saturn V, we sent them to the moon. The 10 orbit was not just to swing around the back. Very bold decision. The moon is essentially gray, no color. I just thought there were so many unknowns that I would have given us about a 50-50 chance of being the first flight to, to land and return someone safely. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. I think it was the biggest event from an aviation point of view and probably from a scientific point of view that happened in the 20th century. That's one small step for man. One Okay, here's we've had a problem here. The looks to me, looking out the uh, hatch, so we are betting something. That series of events started the saga of Apollo 13. The trust that existed between crew and ground was absolute because it takes trust to make split-second decisions. And the whole plan was blown out, almost from the... Uh, the successful return to Earth of what Apollo 13 was the culmination of the efforts by a host of people who simply refused to give up. 
It was an accomplishment of human ingenuity and tenacity. The people of NASA would harness the spirit in pursuit of space exploration beyond their wildest dreams. They would learn about other worlds and other solar systems, and Apollo missions would explore the moon four more times. Ah, Charlie, that's form. Oh, Come on out here and give me a salute. We not only did a lot of work on the moon, but we had a good time. Hippity hoppity, hippity hop, over a hill and a hill. You know you're only going to come that way once in your life. It's got to be one of the most proud moments of my life, I guarantee you. I can read the writing on the wall. Hold a throne. We saw the fragments around Skylab go over us, and I thought, oh brother, there's been an accident in the Skylab launch. And Jack Lausma was uh, the best EVA guy that I've ever met. Lo and behold, he goes out there and fools around with it a while, puts it all together, and it worked great. And he went on to a brilliant scientific discovery, and it gave us some forward momentum in the science that continues right now till today. to see you. Let me call to express my very great admiration for your hard work, your total dedication in preparing for this first joint flight. Mars showed seasonal variations. 